and welcome to our lesson on the air element. The air element is kind of unique and in many of the books you will find about acupuncture it's not very uh, yeah, discussed a lot. Um, the idea is that there is of course the circulation of the chi along the five elements so from water to wood from uh, wood to fire, from fire to earth, from earth to metal and then the whole circle starts anew with the new water. But every cycle in itself, just like life on earth, is seen as being regulated by higher powers, greater forces. And these are generally the spirits. So air chi you could also call spirit chi. And the big difference with the rest of the chi is that it does not circulate as such. And also the energy itself is not so much purely a life force, but already a slightly higher form of energy. So it is more similar to astral energies. What happens in the body is that through the workings of the air chi, our spirit is able to regulate the rest of the flows of our life force. So you could say that within the air meridians is kind of like a programming for all the other types of chi, how they should behave, how they should flow, how the energy should be distributed. The air chi also for the same reason is considered a chi, just like the metal chi and the earth chi, um, which is not to be trifled with, not to be acted upon without really knowing what is going on. But a lot of problems cannot be fixed on the long term without working with the air chi. Because we can increase the circulation of the chi in the body and remove all blockages from a meridian. But if the spirit itself is in a way interested in yeah, having a certain problem, it will recreate that problem again and again and again. So we cannot provide a lasting healing um, without talking to the spirit, working with the spirit or helping the spirit to change its patterns. So similarly to working with the metal chain, it is very important that when we do make any changes in the air chi that we do so um, in concordance with the will of the spirit. So if you um, can use your intuition to do that or you can contact the spirit of the person or the higher self of the person you're working with, uh, the divine self of the person by making contact with their heart or the person's spirit guides, those are very good sources of uh, information of what and what not to do. When we start working with the air chain, it is also quite likely we will run into some karmic issues. And karmic issues require some special attention. Um, people build up certain habits over many lifetimes. And because of these habits, um, we tend to behave the same, to work the same in every new incarnation. So we're in a way building on the foundations we lay in earlier incarnations, but we may also be, find ourselves restricted to those patterns or bound to those patterns even when we want to change them. Um, so it's always very important to note, is this a problem we want to change, we want to alter, or is this actually a foundation we're in a way disrupting when working with the uh, air chi. So, one of the fortunate things of working with air chi is that it is very reactive, very responsive. So you don't need to use a lot of force or a lot of dominance in the same way we do when we're working with the metal chi. Also, this makes any mistakes we make or any problems that occur when working with the air chi very easy to repair. So it's a very forgiving chi to, uh, to work with. The main problem, uh, which you should always look out for, is is the person actually still in contact with their body? Does the spirit still have control over the life force? So 
So these are very important things to have a look at. Working with the air chain, it does not require so much that you yourself have a very good life force, but that you yourself have a very stable spirit. So this also makes it a little bit more uh, tricky to have that authority. So if you're working with a sick person, you're usually able, especially if you do your exercises, to improve your life force so that your life force will be in a better state and therefore have a natural dominance and a natural um, ability to control and to redirect the life force of the other person. With spirit it is much more difficult. Um, if your spirit of, is of a very similar nature, so both are Arimanic in nature or both are Luciferic in nature, satanic or divine in nature, then it is usually quite okay. Because the spirits in a way recognize each other, they immediately form a relationship, a working relationship, based on mutual understanding. And then you can very easily work with the other person. If, however, your spirit is of another type than the person you're treating, it's very likely that there will be some resistance or confusion because the kind of patterns you have will not be recognized by the other spirit or be recognized or acceptable by the meridians you're working upon. So if you're working upon an air meridian, it's very important also to try to work within that spirit's paradigm. So to realize that the person either needs a very structured hierarchical um, system of working with their life force or a very much um, yeah, a system which is attuned to self-development or through sharing, through contact or through receiving higher, higher guidance. So really try to match the paradigm of the inhabitant of the body to the type of patterns that you're implanting uh, or how you're modifying the patterns in the air chi. Um, some other things to note is that the air meridians can also be disrupted by entities. So we'll get more deeply into that once we get to the aura part of the course. Um, but um, there are energetical parasites who feed on life force and they usually feed on emotions or thought patterns and sometimes on the body energy directly. And it is very easy if a spirit can get control over that life force so they can, in a way, create the emotions or the thoughts or the patterns which generate energy which is food to them. Um, so usually these parasites don't manage to get this deeply uh, into the body or uh, even through the aura. But if they do manage to get in, and this is usually by a person touching a uh, possessed object or eating food which is possessed, and this way the spirit can enter into the body directly without having to go through the aura. Um, and if the spirit does enter, then it will probably try to find its way to these air meridians and try to yeah, gain control over the body of the, of the host in this manner. Um, we'll have a little bit of a look at that in the practical part of the, of the lesson. To work with the air chi, it's also very important that your mind is very clear. So meditation becomes a very instrumental part of, uh, of your work. If you're working with just a chi, of course, your chi needs to be focused, you need to be calm, you need to be stable. But working with air chi it is even more important. The reason for this is that um, you really want to get the signals of your spirit into the meridian. And that means you should not project your emotions or your convictions or your thoughts into those meridians. And also convictions, thoughts and emotions, they're also astral energies. So the air meridians will respond to them, they will react to your emotion, they will react to your fantasies, to your imagination. 
but this is not what is desired. We don't want the person to yeah, go into some kind of weird fantasy and respond to that. We want the person to, in a way, keep their focus on the level of spirit. And if you put in a lot of other energies which are lower than the energy of spirit, but still astral, then actually it can become more difficult for the body to listen to its own spirit. Because all these emotions, projections, convictions get in the way. They are kind of a pollution which can hang around in these meridians, preventing the spirit from taking control. These pollutions can happen because, in a way, a person who's giving a treatment puts them there. But more usually, these pollutions happen because of the uh, client in way, having um, a very, yeah, improper self-image. I'll go a little bit more into that. Um, ideally, the person's personality and also the body is a reflection of the spirit. So the spirit has a certain nature. It tries to grow the personality and the ego and also the physical body into a reflection of its own nature. But depending on circumstances, food, energy available, uh, support or obstacles which are encountered along the way, some parts of that yeah, energy body will be yeah, either stunted in their growth or they may have grown too much because they become overstimulated. So in the end we are not a perfect reflection of our spirit. But it's a little bit like a funhouse mirror, you know, these mirrors which are twisted, so we are a twisted reflection of our spirit. And these very twists also find their place within the air meridians. And this, you could say, um, concept of self, which is in, on the one hand true, because you are that way, uh, is also at the same time untrue because your spirit is not that way. And all these illusions, they also keep uh, the spirit from getting control over the body and it puts lower parts of the astral body, uh, like indeed um, the ego, the yeah, anyway, self-concept and convictions in control over the body instead of the spirit itself. So in a way, due to our experiences, we are in a way, you could say, programming our air meridians to behave in a certain way, to act as a certain personality, but it may not be our true nature, our true personality. It may just be an adaptation which we have yeah, forged to deal with uh, the world and the circumstances we found ourselves in. So working with the air chi is very much a process of trying to filter out all the yeah, hang-ups, all the blockages, the illusions and the fears, which in a way prevent perfect control of the spirit over the body. Uh, there's many healing systems which are based on yeah, working with the air meridians, on in a way re-establishing control of the spirit over the body. And I've seen many yeah, great cases of healing, which I would consider myself to be quite miraculous, as a result of re-establishing the control of the spirit over the body. Um, ultimately, if the spirit loses too much uh, control and cannot yeah, um, benefit from having the body anymore, usually the body will yeah, uh, either trundle along in its own way, but more usually it will derail itself, uh, become sick, get an accident, um, and yeah, the life will end because the spirit is no longer taking care of it, it's no longer supporting it. But it, this is quite unusual. It's very usual that there are problems, even big problems, but they generally do not lead to a self-destruction pattern. So, in, if you want to put it in numbers, um, generally you can say that uh, the spirit is okay with 80% loss of control. So, if it still has 20% left of yeah, to being in touch with its own incarnation and controlling and modifying its own incarnation, 
then it feels that yeah, being in the body is still worthwhile. If it becomes less than 20%, then it feels that the ego is completely taking over, that life becomes very mechanical, the person is just programmed by the world, no longer responsive enough to the spirit. Then the spirit will usually create a crisis, like a disease or um, a burnout or chronic fatigue, chronic illness or something else, so that the person will have a chance to listen to the spirit again and to get out of the situation which is overwhelming them. And if that still doesn't work, then sometimes the self-destruct button will be pressed. So, thank you for listening to this uh, first introduction about working with the Archi. In the next video, I will go into how to prepare for um, working with Archi. And in the third video, of the, uh, the uh, theory, I will go into the typical problems and the location of the armory.